Good morning. Welcome to Boardroom Media. We're joined once again by the CEO of XM, Peter Maguire, for the XM.com weekly market update. Pete, welcome back. Good morning, Andrew. Plenty of activity, particularly in the US last week with the yes. meeting at Jackson Hole. We'll touch on that a little bit later. But first of all, let's start with some domestic numbers. The Australian retail sales came out early in yeah. the week, up 1.3%. And if we look over the last six months, it's a, been a fairly consistent figure there. Well, it has been. It tailed off in winter, but certainly there's uh, they're smelling spring. The flowers are out and people are spending more. So that's a good sign for retail. Let's see how that runs up to Christmas. Be nice if it actually increases and gets over that two number. But we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, and obviously a big bearing on that's going to be what the RBA does with interest rates, which we anticipate will continue to rise over the course of the year. Yeah. That leads into the Aussie dollar as well. It's still hovering around that 69 cent mark. It's been there for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. Definitely under pressure from the US as well. Absolutely, US dollars had a big boom. That US King dollar has been outstanding for a trade and the Aussie just can't get lift off. It's really range bound, that 69 number, even you know down to 68 and a half. So it'll be, let's see what happens over the next couple of days, but I'm not expecting any real breakouts. I think there's further trajectory to the upside for the US dollar. Very much so, which puts that uh, more pressure on the Aussie. Yeah. Let's head up to China. We've heard a huge amount of... Wow. <laughs> just a brief slide on the Chinese property market. Plenty of talk there over the last probably six months now. Yes. Uh, it's a major driver of the economy there, but huge 32%, amount of problem. Yeah, 32% the property market. I've done a fair bit of study on it. And naturally, you've got domestic bondholders and you've got international bondholders. So there's that side of it from a financing perspective. You've got people that aren't paying their mortgages. Mm. You've got the other side, which is that they pay like a project marketing process. You know, you put your money down for an apartment and then you start paying on that straight away. So there's another side of the industry that's a little bit probably not only over leveraged, but the fragility of the market. And they've got their own issues, not only weather outages, but certainly supply chains and COVID and you name it, China's really under the pump. C certainly is. And that, and we look at the year on year change in hot, um, house prices. So yeah. it's a clear trend there. Obviously the last month, um, zero, negative 0 0.9. Mm. And you would suspect that's probably going to be well, does it in a direction. Yeah, does it ramp up from, well, ramp down further from here mm. leading up to the end of the year? Plenty of people are saying, well, we're not doomsayers, but the, the you know, that's a fairly, fairly heavy fall. Mm. And we'll just have to see how that all, that contagion is the worry. Mm. Who's holding the debt and what happens to the you know, judgment day? Someone somewhere is holding the debt. At some point in time, correct. So and if we look at the, the PMI numbers are coming out later this week, yeah. The consensus is they're going to be fairly flat yep. once again. So, but these numbers are, are fairly critical to how things are travelling in China. Well, exactly, and you know anything under fifty is contraction. You'd want to be at this time, you know, to get some boom time to the upside. You'd want fifty-five plus for your PMIs, and current coming in at forty-nines and forty-eights and forty-sevens, mirror imaging what's happening in Europe. That's not a good sign. That really takes, because someone again, someone somewhere has got to buy something. Mm. And Main Street is the buyer, and if they're being hit with interest rates, then that's where the recessionary fears come in. It certainly is, and obviously the next GDP number will be fairly crucial to how things are looking in China. Yeah. Uh, moving to the US, on the back of Jackson Hole, the not equity only. market- Got copped, tanked. Copped a beating on Friday down a yeah. thousand points on the back of the uh, the chairman's speech. Obviously the bond market probably took a day or so to react to that, but with the 10 year back above three now, if we look, so there was only, that was down at two and a half percent. That's at the, right. At the, at the end of August, or like a month yeah. ago. So, yeah. sorry, at the end of- End of uh, July, end of start July. of August. Yeah, we're yeah. only a month away. Yeah, so, um, and it's now back close to that 3.1 mark. Talk about so, volatility. Mm. Don't the bond traders love it? Look at that. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. And as we know, you know, <laughs> the interest rate in bond markets drive pretty much all markets. So, Sentiment. Yep, yeah, very much so. So that's, once again, that level yeah. there is going to be watched very closely. Very closely. Um, and I think with, uh, until they get the next inflation figure out of the States, I know there's a huge amount of data coming out at the back end of this week. Yep. But once again, the, the inflation is the big one. Has that been, well, you can't say it's been tamed because it is so, still so high. But oh, exactly. And we're, Europe's we're galloping and electricity yeah. prices and what we were talking about off air. Just a quick line, two years ago we were paying 40 euro a megawatt hour for electricity. 
Now you're paying in France 1,050 or 1,060. That's 26 times mm. the price. So you can imagine everyone that uses electricity, every service that uses it, someone somewhere's got to pay for it again, and what impact that has to the cost of goods. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just extraordinary. How much would it be to charge a Tesla? <laughs> hey? A lot. Non-farm payrolls, once again, one of the big US numbers coming out later in the week. Um, it's going to be um, flat-ish. Um, you would, but well, that's what they said in July. Yeah. And yeah. July, yeah, that, that is the hardest market in the world to even try and guesstimate. You know, the, I've seen many analysts, they say, oh, it's 200,000, it delivers 400,000. But many times you'll see, oh, they're tipping 500,000, it gets 100,000. But last month was a boom to the upside mm. and it just shot out everyone's expectations. They're saying that this particular month leading up to the, that's the middle of July, that uh, number so it comes out the start, middle of August, I should say, comes out the first Friday of September. I think around about that 200,000 would be a number, but hey, who knows? Mm, yeah, it does fluctuate quite a bit. Yep. Um, and finally, we look at some of the commodity-based currencies. The charts mm. are very similar across yeah. all three currencies. Yeah. They're struggling. Well, they're very much so. And when you're looking at that Kiwi, that's really struggling. It's been hit hard and probably more so than the Aussie as it's demonstrating in the Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar's being held up in some ways by high energy prices, crude oil, you know, because of the tar sands and so on. But yes, New Zealand is very much under the whip and uh, yeah, not looking rosy for the Kiwis as far as their dollar versus US. No, no, so uh, plenty going on as per normal. A ton of data out this yeah. week, so it'll be interesting to see where we land when we chat again next week. But yeah, it's thanks exciting. for joining. Yeah, it certainly is, but thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, and that's Boardroom Media, Boardroom Media, and that's been the XM.com weekly market update.